<laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, it's video. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> can't say anything, man. You're wearing a wire. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing a wire. <laughs> no. All right, right here. It's going to be good, though. Here you go, right here, Mary. Right. Love you guys. Glad you're here with me. Yeah, hell yeah. Of course. Wouldn't be anywhere else. This is it.
friends, please stand.
built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been built solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the wind blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority. The Gospel of the Lord. He may be seated. appropriate that the gospel talks all about rain and flood, right? <laughs> and they say that if it rains on your wedding day, that you are blessed. And I would dare say that you will be blessed for your entire marriage after today. <laughs> Kate and Akron, I'm not sure if you remember this or not, but there was a train scene in the movie that you both saw on your first date back in 2013. Now, the film, in case you don't know, it was The Great Gatsby, and I think Leonardo DiCaprio was in it, if I'm not mistaken. What refined taste they had even in high school to go see The Great Gatsby, right? But back to the train for a minute. It was here where a lot of the characters in the film were dealing with this theme called the Valley of the Ashes, the place that kind of symbolizes the brokenness of the human spirit and many ways in which not true love leads to darkness. So now, you're probably saying to yourself, why is he bringing this depressing thing up in a way, right? Uh, and I just say to you, you saw the movie, not me. <laughs> but I mention this point because there's something quite powerful, connected to that train scene in the Great Gatsby. What is happening here, this very day, in this church and at this altar, is the complete opposite of the Valley of the Ashes. Rather, I would call it the triumph of love. Your love for each other and God's love for you. You both have journeyed together for such a long time now, and beautifully, your love for each other has grown over time. From walks at Rockford Park, time at the beach, cooking breakfast, and your engagement even at the Coleman's Christmas Tree Farm. Your love has, in so many ways, traveled the path that leads to a deeper appreciation of what authentic love is supposed to be. Paul writes about in that second reading that we just heard, true love is patient. It's not rude or selfish. It doesn't hold grudges and it sacrifices for each other. And that, Kate Akron, that really is the secret to living the vocation, the calling of married life. Like Christ, lay down your lives for one another and for your future family. You both know how important and how beautiful family is. Time and again, when we met to do the pre cana training for married life together, you both shared with me how important your family has been, how you first learned love through them, and the love that your family has given you has given you the wings to fly. So to your family here today, in a very special way, to your parents especially, and your siblings, I say to you, thank you. You were the first witnesses to your son, your daughter, to your brother, your sister, of what sacrifice looks like, and how love really looks out for the best of the other person. You, as parents and as siblings, you showed them the importance of virtue, and the importance of values. You sacrificed to send them to Catholic schools. You took them into your heart and your lives, and now, because of your love for them, they're able to share that love with each other. Because of your family love, Kate and Akron will continue that same beautiful tradition of love in their own home together. 
your home, your married life, will be the house that is built on solid rock that Jesus speaks about in this wedding gospel. Because know this, whatever floods may come into married life from time to time, and it does in every married life, be it loss of job perhaps, or illness, or some other cross that you might have to carry as you journey together, you know that you will now face it together in love. Your love will triumph because you know what it means to sacrifice for one another. Your love will triumph because you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and his church, and that will give you strength to continue going forward. And your love will triumph, not in the valley of ashes, but because today Christ sets a seal on your heart. I love that expression from the first reading. God says, set me as a seal on your heart. In just a moment, right here, that will happen. Your love for each other will invite him in in such a beautiful and powerful way that you will now be one in him together. One in hope, one in light, one in joy, and one in showing the world that love always wins. No flood, no storm, no darkness can ever sweep away love if you keep inviting God into your married life and your family life together. Please, we are all asking because we love you, make your married life a witness to the world that anyone who invites God in will always find the strength they need to journey together in love. I have no doubt, Kate Akram, you will do this together for the rest of your lives. And speaking of journeys, I, I want to end with this. I, I wanted to focus on another train, but not from the Great Gatsby, because there's something more real and more current for the both of you. And that train is called Amtrak. <laughs> Rather fitting for the both of you. Now, I did my homework. Back in 1971, when Amtrak was officially registered as a, a chartered organization, they threw out a slogan to attract ridership. And that slogan was this. Now, I'm not going to put you on the spot having to tell you what it is. I don't expect you to know it. But that slogan back in 1971 was called, We're Making It Worth It Again. We're Making It Worth It Again. Your vocation today, right here, your love for each other, is showing the world that married love is worth it. God is worth it. Sacrificing for one another is worth it. That was Amtrak's first slogan. But a few years ago, it changed again. And lately, they've been using the slogan, Get Carried Away. To which I say to you, Akram and Kate, let's do this. Let's get carried away by taking those beautiful vows and exchanging rings. Set love as a seal on your hearts today in this church, and then let God's love for you carry you away to this beautiful place where love always wins. And everybody out here that you see, everybody here who loves you, and I know you didn't want to look out there because you're really nervous, but look out there for just a minute. They all love you, and we're all on board with you for this journey ahead. And what an amazing journey it will be. So let's get carried away. Caitlin, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and this community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord in a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you together today. 
Through this special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated in baptism, that they will be faithful to each other forever and assume the responsibilities of married life. And so I ask you now to state your intentions. Akram and Caitlin, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Good. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the laws of Christ and his church? I am. Good. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony this day, I ask you to turn, face each other, join your hands, and now declare your consent before God and his church. I, Akram. I, Akram. Take you, Caitlin. Take you, Caitlin. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you. To love you. And honor you. And honor you. All the days of my life. All of the days of my life. I, Caitlin. I, Caitlin. Take you, Akram. Take you, Akram. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you. To love you. And honor you. And honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent that you have declared before the church and grace, graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord these rings, which we bless in your name, so that those who wear them will remain entirely faithful to each other, abide in peace and in your will, and always live in mutual charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Caitlin, receive this ring. Caitlin, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Akram, receive this ring. Akram, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> my friends, their words and their love for each other and God's love for them have united them in holy matrimony. And so now, with great joy, I ask you please to stand as we pray together now for this couple, this married couple, for the first time. And I invite our intercessor forward for, to read the intercessions. confidence in God's love for us, we now lift up our hearts and our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Our response to these prayers is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and its leaders, may our commitment to the gospel lead us to deepen our faith and trust in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For our world and its leaders, may all people be treated with the dignity they deserve as God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our country and those who defend it, may our men and women who serve in the military be kept safe from all harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are sick, lonely, or depressed, may they be strengthened by God's love and aided by friends and family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of our guests gathered here with us today, 
May they enjoy the warm company of family and friends and have safe travel on their journey home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Akram and Caitlin, may they live long, blessed lives together. May their love grow stronger each and every day, and may they build a family rooted in faith and unconditional love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Zach Tomchek and Mary Marinelli on this her 100th birthday, and for all those who have died, may they know the peace and fullness of eternal life with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of love that you have poured out into the lives and the hearts of Akram and Caitlin. Continue to bless their love journey, and may we always be a light for them as they move forward in love. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first gift now that we give to this married couple is the gift of prayer for them. And so with great confidence in the Father's love, we pray the words that Jesus taught us as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love those he has joined by a holy covenant. So, Akram and Caitlin, I ask you to bow your heads. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to a man to the companionship they had in the beginning, is now endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these, your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing, Send down on them the grace of your Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts that they will always remain faithful to the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Caitlin, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises have been sung throughout Scripture. May her husband, Akram, entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may now show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And so now, Lord, we implore you, may these, your servants, hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There's one final beautiful tradition at a Catholic wedding, and that usually is where the bride, in a very special way, goes with her husband for the first time to offer a flower tribute to our Blessed Mother. In this moment, they ask Our Lady to bless their married life and in a very special way to bless Caitlin as wife and future mother. And so now I ask this beautiful couple, for the first time as husband and wife, to go to Our Lady and offer a rose and a prayer.
Before the final blessing, I did just want to take this opportunity to, in a very special way, just let everyone here know how incredibly blessed I was to work with Akram and Caitlin. Their love for each other and their joy for each other really touched my heart deeply, and I know that you will have a life filled with many blessings and a lot of love. I see how you love each other, and I see how much you're willing to sacrifice for each other, and that means that your love will always triumph, okay? So keep hopping on that train of love for each other, all right? And I know that you will have a beautiful life together. I'm blessed Thank to be a part of the journey. We're all blessed to be a part of your journey. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. I ask you now please to bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Akram and Caitlin Madanat. You may proceed.